game changing. That's really the only way that we can describe the impact that advanced machine control has made within the construction industry. My name is Jonathan Dunlap and over the next several minutes, we're gonna take a closer look at this exciting technology. Whether you're a first time user or perhaps you're just looking for a refresher course on the basic operation of your Trimble GCS or CAT AccuGrade system, we've included a simple navigation down at the bottom of the screen. This will help you refer back to certain areas or topics as you need so you can easily go through this training at your own pace. And of course, if you have any questions or need further information, don't hesitate to contact your SciTech representative directly. So let's begin here. We're looking at both your machine receivers as well as the machine display. These components together are typically referred to as a cab kit and they represent the nerve center of your machine control solution. We'll begin by installing the MS992s on the mast and make sure that the lights are pointed toward the cab of the machine. Being able to see the lights on the receiver will help you gain valuable insight as to how your system is operating. When tightening the ratchet handles, be sure not to over tighten. It doesn't take a lot of pressure to hold these receivers on. Also, be sure to tuck the ratchet handle up under the receiver, that way is protected from obstructions. If you look just above the lights on the front of the MS-992, you can see the angle that the coil cable will attach. Make sure you line it up and you feel the connector lock into place. At the end of the day, reverse the steps. If you leave the coil cables on the machine, make sure to inspect them for dirt and debris and then reconnect them to the savers on the mast to prevent water and corrosion buildup. As we move into the machine cab, let's connect the display to the machine as we prepare to use the system. When attaching the display to the connector in the cab of the machine, be careful not to bend any pins and make sure you can feel the connector lock into place. If you're using a ram mount, be sure not to over tighten the ball clamp. This will cause premature wear on the arm assembly. If using an ARO mount, be sure everything is clamped and not over tightened. When powering on the CB460, be sure the machine is already running. This will prevent the display from turning off when you go to start the machine. To power on the display, press the power button in the lower right hand corner until you hear an audible beep. Once the display is powered up completely, you'll be presented with the default operating screen for your GCS or AccuGrade system. Over on the right hand side, you'll see six buttons. These keys are called soft keys because their function changes as you move through the menus and settings. This allows you to easily select the most appropriate function quickly and easily. Let's briefly look at each of these keys and their functions immediately after you power on the display. F1, this key toggles between blade left and blade right. F2, this key isn't used during normal operation. F3, lane guidance. If you press the F3 key, you go into the lane guidance selection screen. After picking the master alignment, you can choose which lane of your road you want to use for a surface. The best example of this would be for a large cut or fill area on a road job. When grading the area, you aren't concerned with ditches and smaller details. This option gives you the ability to hold the slope of the lane across the job. This keeps all of your water going in one direction, and once you get close to grade, you can then remove the master alignment and start working on ditches and other lanes. F4, the fourth button down, controls your offsets. When you press this key, it takes you directly into the vertical offset screen. Using the four-way arrows allows you to dial in your subgrade for building pads or roads. The bottom right key, or F6 key, will take you to the horizontal offset screen for selecting a line to use for guidance. After you enter the horizontal screen, press F1 to select your alignment. Most contractors use this when they want to overcut an area for curbs or edges of pavement. Pressing F5 records a point and stores it in a CSV file for office use. If you press and hold F5, it allows you to edit the code and name of the point. This is great for storing information such as manholes and cleanouts. GPS accuracy mode. 
Pressing F6 allows the operator to adjust the tolerance the machine will function within. For roads and buildings, you would want to be in fine mode, and in green spaces or topsoil areas, medium or coarse will be sufficient. It's important to note that this button does not increase the accuracy of the machine. Two other buttons that we'd like to cover quickly are the enter and escape keys. The enter key always selects your highlighted option, while the escape key always goes back to the previous selection or menu item. If you ever find yourself in a menu or setting that you don't understand, simply press the escape key repeatedly until you return to the default screen. Before we get started moving material, we need to load a design into the display. This step is imperative as it tells the system all of the cut and fill and design information it needs to utilize machine control. Naturally, if you have any questions surrounding design files, your SciTech representative is a great resource to help you discover more about this specific process. To load design, press the menu key one time. This will display the configuration screen. Once the configuration screen is visible, select design as the top option. Simply press OK and all of the loaded designs are visible. At this time, use the up and down arrows on the keypad to highlight the design and press OK to load the design. Now press the back or return key until you return to the working screens or map view. To create a new level or a flat pad, Follow the previous steps to get to the select design screen. Once you see your available designs, press the F1 key or top right soft key to enter into the new level menu. The first thing you are prompted for is coordinate system selection. You would normally use use last coordinate system. If you use auto create on load, you will get different elevations than your current job you are working on. Press OK on the keypad. Now you can enter in the elevation of the pad using the keypad. Up and down scrolls through the numbers and left and right toggles to your next or previous digit in your elevation. Or you can use the here key which is the F2 key. This grabs the elevation from your blade tip. Be sure to have the correct tip selected using the F1 key. The blade tip that is shown next to the F1 key is the blade tip the elevation will be pulled from. Now that you have an elevation entered, press OK and give the new level a name using the arrow keys on the keypad. Press OK and then highlight the design and press OK again to load the design. Now simply press the escape key until you can begin or resume your work. At this point, it's important to briefly mention a common oversight that can occur after you load a design and that's the topic of radio networks. Your GPS coordinator or SciTech representative can provide you with the correct radio network. This setting allows multiple base stations and companies to operate on nearby job sites. If you're getting a low accuracy error on your screen, you might need to reset your radio network. Press the menu key and then F2 for installation. This will get you into the installation screen. Scroll down to connectivity settings and press OK. Based on the configuration of the machine, this screen will vary. Highlight machine radio configuration and press OK. Use the arrow keys to select the correct radio network and press OK. Press the escape key until you get back to the working screen. Vertical offsets are used almost every day with machine control. It is important to understand your data when doing this as well. Most machine control data is set to finish grade to make things easier to understand. But offsets allow you to temporarily adjust design grade so that you can accomplish your work in steps. It's easier to cut 4 inches at a time rather than 3 feet. Before adjusting your offsets, you also need to determine the type of offset needed vertical or perpendicular. Vertical is used 90% of the time during roadway or site jobs. This option is used to lower your grades to get to the desired subgrade when accounting for rock or concrete or asphalt. 
A perpendicular lift is used when you need to put down a layer of material on a slope that requires a desired thickness. An example would be the clay liner on a landfill. Offsets are a great way to manage your workload throughout the entire production process, from rough to finish grading and everything in between. Guide its method. This is one of the most important concepts to understand about machine control. AccuGrade or GCS offers three very different options for guidance. While each of these three methods are perfectly viable, your specific application will help determine which one works best for your particular needs. To begin with, let's look at single point guidance. Using this method, AccuGrade or GCS 900 looks at the slope that the point is over and applies that slope to the blade. Using a method like this protects the grade breaks on your job site like the crown of your road or the top of a slope. This is the most conservative method of determining guidance. For single point guidance, there's two options. First, and most commonly, there is 3D one point center. We use 3D one point center for 90% of the work completed. This is an excellent choice for roads or building pads. Next, we have 3D one point tips. This method is used 9% of the time and works great for ditches or shoulders of the road. You can also use this if you want to grade outside of your building pads. Simply switch it to 3D one point tips and highlight the correct tip using the F1 key. As long as you have the tip in the building pad, it will hold the correct elevation across the blade. In your AccuGrade or GCS 900 system, you can utilize two point tips. While not being very common, this method is used in rare cases where you don't have to be exact, but you want a nice finish. Green spaces or landscape areas are the perfect example. Finally, when selecting your guidance method, there's a persistent option to adjust to avoid overcut. Here at SciTech, we typically set this selection to yes. This option will prevent the machine from overcutting anything on the design when in auto. I compare using automatics to landing a plane. If you think about it, you never see a plane come straight down to the runway. It's always moving forward and comes in at a nice angle for a smooth landing. For automatics, we use the same concept. Keep the dozer moving forward and bring the blade down and just before the blade touches the ground, click the auto manual switch. If you are sitting still and click the auto manual switch, it may lift the front of the machine off the ground, trying to cut out and then when you start moving, it will cut a big divot from all of the pressure on the blade. Once you finish making your pass with the machine, you can pull the controls back to shut the automatics off or click the auto manual switch. As we wrap up this training, we quickly want to discuss valve tuning. As you go from one material to the next, or as your machine starts to wear over time, you may need to tune your valves. In most cases, it is better to have the blade lift faster than it lowers, but let the machine determine what needs to be done. If you are seeing short choppy waves, your valves are too fast, and slow long waves means the valves are too slow. Change the settings in small increments until you get the desired results. In AccuGrade or GCS 900, there is an excellent guide on tuning the valves and in which order to do them in. Proper valve tuning is imperative to maximize the performance of your machine control system. Your SciTech representative will cover diagnostics and valve tuning in much greater detail. As you can see from this short video, your Trimble GCS or CAT AccuGrade system is a simple yet powerful enhancement to your machine's capabilities. By following the best practices and concepts contained within this training, you've got a great start to making the most of your construction technology. A large part of the power of this machine control system is the ability to get up and running quickly and easily. It's important to remember that there's a large amount of power still contained within your CAT or Trimble technology. For additional training or tips, don't hesitate to contact your SciTech representative directly. On behalf of everyone here at SciTech, I'd like to thank you for joining us. 
and thank you for allowing SciTech to be your construction technology provider.